Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. My name is Shabir Karimi. Uh, I'm the GM of 40 Monitor here at Fortinet. Uh, came as part of the acquisition that Ben mentioned. So the company was called Penopta, uh, has been around for about 12 years and was acquired back in uh, December of 2020. So we've been uh, now under the Fortinet umbrella for about seven or eight months, uh, working on integration of the security fabric and continuing with our uh, original kind of vision of uh, of infrastructure monitoring that's vendor agnostic. So you know, before we get into demo, uh, I, I want to just touch base on uh, kind of the architecture of how the platform uh, actually works. How do we collect the data? How is it deployed? How does this work in uh, branch locations? How is it working on-prem private clouds, uh, on-prem uh, data centers or private clouds? How does it work in a public cloud? And how do we give you the various advantage points of monitoring that will give you that holistic picture of what's happening? Now, you'll see as part of the demo, that this is much more than just switching in wireless, right? It, it is a holistic solution that gives you details about every layer of the services that you're ultimately delivering. And the key there is to bring all that data into a single platform, allowing us to unify that data, unify teams, increase ability to correlate data across the different uh, layers of infrastructure, and ultimately reduce mean time to resolution, mean time to diagnostic. So as you look at this diagram, one key thing that makes the solution extremely powerful and extremely easy to use is that it's a SaaS delivered solution. So ultimately there is no heavy deployment into, uh, if you're talking about solar winds where you have to deploy you know, multiple hardware components and, and install windows licensing, things like that. This is all SaaS delivered. So uh, time to value, time to implementation is very quick. And that's where ultimately all the data is stored, all the control plane is, where all the processing happens. Uh, and you're seeing these various arrows point into it because we collect data from different vantage points. And the first vantage point that I want to cover here is one that Ben has uh, mentioned a couple of times now, which is that digital experience monitoring of applications. Because in the end, what does the business really care about? It's about are the applications that we're providing to our end users, whether they're customers or internal end users, are those working? And then the next question after that, when they're when it's not working as expected is, where's the problem? Is it on the a transit line coming into the data center or edge location? Is it the edge device? Is it with the switching in the wireless? Is it with the virtualization? Is it with the, the, the VM itself or the application running within that? Is it with the storage? So having all of that data in this platform allows you to kind of pin down where the issue is. So the first vantage point that I'm covering here is that external vantage point. As part of 40 Monitor, we have over 50 different points of presence, and that's uh, actually increased now to over 60, and we keep growing, uh, where we have different probes around the world, allowing you to check those applications from those different geographic locations. And it's not just basic availability and you know the network metrics that you expect, like latency, packet loss, and jitter. Of course, we give you those metrics because they're important in understanding uh, why something's occurring. But the secret sauce, if you will, is the synthetic monitoring. So being ability, the ability to actually simulate real end user behavior, whether it be an e-commerce application, we want to make sure that end users can go through and uh, place orders and add items to their cart, whether it be an ERP or a CRM that our internal stakeholders are using. It could be even a non-web application scenario where uh, our end users are trying to log into their mailboxes, whether that's Office 365 or on-prem exchange. It could be making sure that VPN authentication is working with uh, afford, afford a net solution or, or a third party solution. It could be making sure that things like DNS are working, right? So we're actually using the true protocol to make sure that the services are working end to end. And those various synthetic checks come in different flavors. You can use basic uh, out of the box kind of turnkey solutions. We also give you the ability to do browser synthetics, which allows you to use a browser recorder to record some sort of transaction end to end and then have 40 monitor run that. You also give uh, the ability for the, to them to, to code their own tests in JavaScript should they want to. Now this external vantage point is an important one, but then we also give them an internal vantage point. So as we move to the right of the diagram here, we look at an on-site uh, collector, which is a virtual appliance sitting on-prem, which, which allows them to uh, run that same kind of monitoring multi-directionally. So if they have an internal application that's not exposed to the outside, we don't want them poking holes in the firewall. We're gonna use the on-site collector to give that same level of monitoring behind the firewall. But this same collector gives you other, uh, other benefits. One is testing and, and monitoring the performance of applications from this edge location out, whether it be out to the cloud, 
whether it be across your VPN tunnels to other sites and your main data center to see what that application performance looks like. Since Collector gives you that vantage point. It also serves a purpose of network performance monitoring. So taking your switches, routers, firewalls, wireless access points, controllers, other connected devices and gathering data out of them. And to go back to the original point, this is vendor agnostic. That's how we started. Of course, as part of Fortinet, we're going to make the fabric integrations extremely strong, but we're always going to remain true to that uh, original vision of making sure that we support every vendor under the sun using a variety of protocols, whether it's SNMP, whether it's an API-based integration, whether it's using some sort of log ingestion, we will find a way always to get as much data out of those networks as possible. The same onsite collector can do flow, uh, NetFlow, uh, uh, SFlow, and, and IP fix and as well as doing network configuration management, again, in a vendor agnostic form. So being able to log into devices remotely, uh, get configuration backups, issue new configuration changes, and giving you the ability to kind of audit that and review that as well uh, for all, all vendors out there. Beyond the onsite collector, there is also a, an agent. There's a server agent and there's a client agent. So the server agent is there for your Windows, Linux, Unix, uh, FreeBSD or, or Mac operating systems to be able to get information out of the virtual machine or bare metal server to be able to understand CPU, memory, disk, I.O., all the basics, but also getting into application level metrics. If you're deploying .NET workloads, Java workloads, using Oracle databases, whatever it may be, we have different plugins that give you views into the performance data of what's running within that virtual machine. That same agent, as well as the onsite collector, also bring in something that we believe is industry leading, which is automation ability to be called countermeasures. And that gives you the ability to not only do remediation, which everyone wants to talk about self-healing remediation, but as Ben mentioned earlier, not everyone's ready for that, frankly speaking. The forward thinking companies are, and they're certainly using it, but where we also see countermeasures really uh, playing a large role in automation is automating their diagnostic and triage steps as well. So that when the operator gets involved in the incident, many of their basic operations and actions to diagnose the problem are already done and added to the ticket. And we can auto create tickets. And I'll show some of that in the demo here in a few minutes as well. Top box here is cloud. AWS, Azure, Google, name it, uh, you know, name the cloud you're using. We have native integrations there as well that allow us to ingest data from uh, IaaS workloads, platform as a service workloads, and your SaaS workloads, including cloud native. If, you're, if the company is moving towards uh, Docker containers and Kubernetes, we have the ability to ingest data from there as well. So what we're looking at here is the 40 monitor console. Again, SaaS based, which means you can access it from anywhere. There's no need to uh, you know, VPN into your private data center. This is available with a best in class security to make sure that single sign on and, and identity management is all done through 40 cloud, but also through uh, other third party uh, identity management systems like Okta and uh, Active Directory and, and LDAP and so on as well. As you invite your teams in. So again, our vision is to unify teams, unify data. We want all of your team members to come in. The licensing is not user-based. And as they come in, their user experience is gonna differ based on their role. Someone who's an executive may come in more on a dashboard, like the one I'm showing you right now, where it's showing you know, global app performance across my three different branches. And I get a quick visual here to see if there's any sort of problems that can drill into that uh, location to see what's happening and, and, and get more details out of the incident if I want to or stay more high level to see, you know, kind of how many incidents are, uh, have occurred recently or occurring right now. I can also see my different branch uh, location uh, performance here, as well as uh, external performance. So here's a situation where I'm showing overlaid in the same graph. What does the performance look like from the branch location itself here in the pink line, but also what's it look like from our Dallas external probe that's part of the 40 monitor network. So I can see if the issue is somewhat regionalized or is it purely have to do with my, uh, my edge location? Also bring in, bringing in my other uh, typical kind of network uh, metrics here with jitter, uh, as well as getting into the true synthetic monitoring. So here's where we're seeing a true layer seven monitoring of that application. Uh, so we can see how that, how, how that differs from our layer three metrics as well. Um, also bringing here at the bottom kind of, you know, what's a, a quick view into uh, my, my WAN? Is it, is it uh, you know, is that uh, link saturated and so on? And this is just an example of one dashboard. There are many, there are many that are out of the box that bring in uh, different network views, but also different infrastructure views and application views for the things that I mentioned before, like my VMware workloads, Windows Linux servers, and, and uh, you know, other views into my, my Fortinet infrastructure. 
Uh, but this is also where customers can create their own uh, dashboards, whether it be something like I'm showing you here now that basically has, you know, bringing together multiple kind of data points into an executive view where they want to show some performance data. They want to show some tiles, um, tables showing status and availability, heat maps, um, you name it. And it's a very, very simple to build these dashboards. As you can see here, you've got a full canvas builder. It's a modern experience like you would see in a Tableau or a Power BI where you know, you've got a full uh, catalog here of different widget types. And as you uh, add them into the, uh, into the canvas, uh, drag and drop and, and easy ability to kind of extend this however you'd like using the control pane here to the right. Now, the part that I want to pivot into here with the remaining time is, you know, we do ingest the data. We give you that ability to kind of do it across the plane, across vendors, across infrastructure types. But then how do we operationalize when there are problems? I think that's the, that's the other thing that we've really spent a lot of time focusing on. That's the part that Gartner has also seen and, and commented on that's really a strength of the platform, which is the incident management. So as we see uh, an issue occur, as the threshold breach occurs, as a fault occurs, many monitoring systems suffer from alert fatigue issues because they deal with those as individual alerts. And you'll get flooded with those in your inbox. It becomes so noisy to the point where you really can't operate on that. You start filtering it to a folder. You look at it only when somebody's screaming about something. And so, you know, what, what will you do? You'll go off and get another uh, solution to kind of uh, sit on top of that and uh, aggregate all the noise. But that's really a bandage, right? I mean, when you bring in a different platform, there's going to be some packet loss to use a networking term in terms of its ability to really make sense of that. 40 Monitor has incident management built in. So what we're looking at here is the incident hub. Each of these rows shown here is an incident that's been automatically created by the platform as one or more events, uh, faults, uh, some sort of threshold breaches occurred. It correlates those things together and it keeps state. So we can see this incident still ongoing. It's a warning level for now. It may escalate later depending on what's occurring. We can see how long it's been active for, which piece of infrastructure it's impacting and all the various events that it's rolled up together into that. From here, I can respond or react. So I can uh, assign this incident to a lead within my team. I can acknowledge this incident, which means I'm getting involved in some way. I can log things here. I can uh, broadcast a message to my team members or other stakeholders. I can also influence the alerting that's going to be coming from here as well. Someone earlier, I forgot who, asked about kind of uh, proactive alerting to the team as well, and not just display use cases. And 40 Monitor does that, and I'll show that here in just a few minutes. And I can influence the alerting from here as well. Any incident with a green beaker lit up is telling us about a countermeasure action that's launched for us taking some sort of action. And then lastly, I can also put these under maintenance. So this is a known problem I'm working in the network. I can suppress these issues by using either a pre-scheduled uh, maintenance or a real-time maintenance. But I can use the same dashboard to look at historical data. I can go to resolved incidents and I can run more advanced queries here to say, show me an incident that occurred during a certain time frame that impacted certain groups of infrastructure, that had certain tags on it. So we have a tagging concept built into our platform that maybe were uh, you know, led by a certain individual user and so on. So there's really powerful uh, reporting capabilities here as well. So I can get into the data if I want to as a knock manager. Now, as we drill into an incident, what do we see? Here's where we spend a lot of time in our demos. As we drill into an incident, this is the incident portal. At the top, we're getting some basic information around timing, status, severity. My same actions are shown here to be able to acknowledge maintenance, set incident leads. I also have problem and solution management, the ability to document within here what the problem was, what was the business impact, who got involved, and keeping this close to the metal, keeping this close to the incident in the monitoring systems that if we're looking at this at a later time, it's all right here. Now, we do have the ability to integrate with other external platforms like ServiceNow and so on, and I'll talk about how that works just in a few moments. But I also have the ability to do solution management in here. Now, this solution management is more, uh, you, it's not AI at this point. This will get to the point where it starts suggesting things that uh, maybe are coming from 40 AOPS or from the, uh, you know, from the, the data lake that Ben mentioned before as well. But this is more to operationalize, how do I spread the knowledge that I have in my head that, because I've been here for 12 years to so the other people that are newer to start putting in solutions uh, into the platform that's, that says these kinds of issues, these are the kinds of solutions I would use. And the platform will start suggesting them when new incidents occur that are the same types. So I'm seeing some of these solutions presented here to the right. I've also got the ability to uh, kind of drill into the data here. I'm seeing an, an incident here where we've rolled up multiple things together. Uh, that have occurred at the same time that are all related. I can see the telemetry here around kind of how it got to that state. 
I've got some uh, SLA kind of metrics here to the right in terms of uh, over the last 30 days, how, how stable has this been? When was the last time this occurred? And over the last 90 days, how many times has this happened telling me whether this is a chronic issue or whether it's something that's fairly new? Now from an autumn, sorry, Peter, I think you were having uh, a question. Yeah, can I just ask you a quick question? Um, I noticed when we were looking at the sort of last view on the Insulin dashboard, there was um, quite a large number of critical events. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was wondering what time period that was over because uh, uh, that seems to be, if you're actually gonna manage it, um, that, that seems to be way too many incidents that you would actually be able to manage. Um, yeah. and, and I'm just wondering how you actually manage that. Because... Well, it's a great example of the log fatigue you was just talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in, in practice, what we see with most of our customers, they don't get to this level of having that many. These are sitting here in a demo environment to kind of show, uh, show, show a use case. But uh, what you'll see is that uh, as part of the incident uh, workflow, we trigger alerting that then hunts down the right team and escalates until somebody solves it. So there's workflows built in to say, this, uh, this incident has sat for too long. It's breaching an SLA. Go from the knock to level one, level two, level three, and it'll hunt down until it finds somebody, uh, even to the point where it might go to the CEO of the company if it's not getting solved. Yeah, and my concern was just you're going to get too many and they're not going to get dealt with. Um, is there a way of sort of categorizing them so, so you, you, you can decide what sort of alas you want to see and you don't want to see? Um, because uh, I, I, some of those were very much like, you know, there was one that was saying, you know, an RDP host was not achievable, I think I saw in one of the screenshots, yeah. you know, and that might just be because the machines turned off. So uh, I, I didn't know if there's a way up sort of, ca ca can you choose what's critical and what's warning? Or, or is that just automatic? No, absolutely. So our, our general approach, and this, is, this makes us, this differs us from a lot of uh, platforms where there's this, you turn the system on and it starts collecting a bunch of data and triggering a bunch of alerts. This is all configurable. So if we go into a specific asset, whether it's a, a, net, uh, you know, a network device, here's a, a FortiGate specifically, you'll see that your monitoring configuration is here. And I've got the ability to kind of come in and, and tweak things like, you know, admin operational status or the bandwidth uh, coming in. I can tweak the thresholds based on what is important to me, what I consider to be a meaningful alert, right? So we're always going to collect the data. So it, the general thesis with 40 Monitor is collect as much as you can, but only alert and create incidents and the things that matter, right? So if RDP ports are not important to you, those won't be turned on. And you'll, you'll make the decision as part of your onboarding. And the way that you manage this at scale is using templates. So all of my FortiGates or all of my, you know, I've actually got a, I know Ben didn't want to name a competitor, but I will. Uh, here's the Cisco Nexus switch, just to show you the vendor agnostic uh, behavior here. You know, and I've got a template that's basically configuring all the metrics that I want and all the thresholds that I want set as well. So as every Cisco Nexus switch comes online, my monitoring policy automatically apply the right template that is only dictating the things that I care about. And so our, our customer success team really focuses on, on the alert fatigue issue because it's a real problem that everybody's facing. And I'm assuming that this can be fired off to whatever ticketing system is being used so that it isn't a separate standalone ticketing system firing off alerts to people, but send it to ServiceNow, send it to Zendesk, and then let it go through its escalation with links to get back into this data, I assume? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. we, we support both use cases depending on what tools you're using today, right? So when this incident triggers, and we're seeing that as part of the timeline here on the left, kind of a number of different actions are being taken place. These are being facilitated by a workflow you can set up. Here's a timeline workflow that allows you to say, zero seconds into the incident, trigger uh, an email, a phone call, uh, an SMS to somebody, uh, push an email into Slack, or sorry, push a message into Slack or Teams, or uh, create a ticket. So we do have integrations with the ones you mentioned there, uh, Rocky, so ServiceNow, Zendesk, Jira, Salesforce, ConnectWise. They may be using an uh, incident management system like PagerDuty or OpsGenie. We can integrate with all of those things and we can create tickets there. We can auto create, we can auto close or auto update for you as well so that we take a lot of the manual work that goes into you know, managing the life cycle of those tickets out of the mix. Um, so contextually, it looks like uh, this displays certain data points along with certain issues, correct? Certain data points, uh, yes. I think okay. Any more context there, but yeah, yeah. Yes, so is there a way for every time like I see a, a DHCP error issue that gets ticketed 
to set it up to automatically grab any arbitrary amount of data that we've already collected. Yeah, that's a perfect, actually perfect uh, parlay into what I wanted to show you at the end of the demo, which is the countermeasure functionality, right? So here's some situations where we say this kind of problem, the DHC problem you're talking about, or a DNS fail, DNS lookup failure that's occurring all of a sudden, or whatever it might be, run these countermeasures. And those countermeasures are scripts that uh, some are provided out of the box, some are uh, can be developed by you using Bash, Shell, Python, whatever language you want. So, you know, here's a situation where we have it running a tracer out so we can see kind of the path that's being taken. Are there, is there a packet loss or uh, kind of uh, latency at any, at any of the hops? And we have it running from different external probes or internal probes, but I also have my countermeasures here that are running various command line operations. So now this is a server use case. The same thing can happen on a network device or an endpoint if you wanted to. And you know we're running a netstat capture here. We're running top process capture. We know what, what processes are running on, on, on that server. I'm pulling in some logs and an Apache server. Um, I have even got you know a custom script that I wrote here that's written in shell that's doing a bunch of different kind of lower level uh, triage mechanisms and giving the operator who's maybe more of a basic user a very simple display that, hey, this is good, this is good, this is bad, right? So it's, it's very extensible. It's all, it's all uh, programmatically, you can do whatever you want and, and operationalize that problem you're talking about there, Landon. I do wanna talk about the uh, escalation piece. I kind of briefly flashed the screen, but this is one of the ways that we, you know, make sure that those incidents don't trigger for, don't sit for too long as it's, it's kind of hunting down based on uh, SLA breaches that you use. And, and, and this is just one timeline. So to, uh, I think it was uh, Peter's point about, you know, um, this incident sitting too long. I mean, part of it is getting the issue to the right, the right person at the right time, right? So all issues don't just go to the, this team, send the app related problems to my app dev team, send my storage issues to my storage team, ser server system team, my network team, and so on. So you've got different timelines you can attach to your configurations that say these problem types get routed in this way. And then you build in your escalations accordingly to say, if it sits for too long, escalate in this way as well. And be mindful of the noise level, right? So we don't always want to send a phone call or an SMS for this kind of a warning level issue. The warning issue should use maybe a, an email um, uh, or, or a Slack alert or a Teams alert, then start going to SMS, then go to phone calls, and then maybe you know page uh, the next level if you need to. So there's a lot of flexibility built into the platform that way. Um, you know, we saw, we showed some dashboards, but we also got, you know, the, we also have the drill downs into a specific device view. Uh, again, this is the FortiGate, this is a, a Cisco Nexus switch. You've got your device level metrics here to show CPU, memory, fans, uh, you know, fan speeds, latency, temperature, power supply status, but also your network interface uh, views here as well. So what's happening on each individual interface? Um, getting some high level stats here, being able to drill into a specific interface and see your, your errors and your packets and your bandwidth utilization. Two years worth of data retention history. So you've got a lot of historical data you can go back and look at. And then from here, if you want to drill into your, your uh, flow dashboard to see kind of what this spike is, uh, what, what the spike is all about, you can do that as well. Uh, and then lastly, network configuration management if you wanted to view, review uh, recent config changes that have occurred as well.